If I were to ask you what the meaning of life was, what would your answer be? Do you have an answer that comes popping up into your head immediately? Or do you laugh it off and say that that's a ridiculous question? Now I know that this is a question that we can't find an answer to in the next six to eight minutes. But I'm here to tell you at least why the meaninglessness in life is causing us a new pandemic. A pandemic not of the coronavirus, but one that involves mental health. But first, let me tell you a story. When I was 13 years old, I left Japan, my home country. So within a few weeks notice, I packed up my suitcase, I said goodbye to my family, and I boarded the plane. My first destination was Canada, and then I went to Belgium. And then just like that, for the next 13 years, I traveled to more than 30 countries. Now, why did I do that? I did that because I just had one dream as a child, and that wish was to become a professional ballet dancer. Fast forward 20 years, and I've made it. My dream had come true. This is literally it. But the road to becoming a dancer wasn't easy at all. First of all, it didn't really help that people laughed at me because I was the worst student in my class. It also didn't really help that I didn't even scratch the minimum height requirement to become a professional ballet dancer. So what did I do? I got shoes that were bigger than my feet, I stuffed them with cotton, and hoped that it would give me a few inches. But that wasn't all. Over the years of trying to become a professional ballet dancer, I developed depression, anxiety, and an eating disorder. I still remember those days when my hair fell out due to stress. And in the pursuit of professional success, I stopped eating entirely. Well, not entirely. I ate once a week. And that meal was cabbage. And I stopped drinking water for fear it bloated me. And I still remember thinking that my pet rabbits even got more calories than I did. Now, why am I telling you this story? I'm telling you this story because it shows how capable we human beings can be when we truly want something, when we have such a strong purpose in life, and when we have such a strong aim towards a particular goal, we can withstand almost any suffering. Now, my story isn't as, as half as compelling as Viktor Frankl's case, where he was even able to survive the Holocaust because of his strong desire to write his memoir once he was out of there. The moral of the story is very clear. As Nietzsche once said, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. What I also want to add here is that the meaning of life is not something that you find out there. It's not like you go out on a soul-searching journey in India and find this thing called meaning of life and bring it back home with you. Finding the meaning of life requires much more introspection and much more work. It requires you to understand your origins, where you came from and why you are the way you are. To understand how your past experiences have shaped who you are and have literally shaped your neurological pathways. And once you find it, it doesn't stop there. You have to keep on looking for it. Because we live in a world full of constant distractions. And that means that we have to constantly get back in touch with ourselves to listen to our hearts, our minds, and our bodies. But the truth of the matter is that a lot of people in our modern society have difficulties finding this meaning of life. We've become addicted to immediate gratification and our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. We've forgotten what it's like to feel, to experience, and to want something. Now, you might be asking, why is that a problem? It's a problem because according to a research published in the Journal of Mental Health, emptiness and suicidal tendencies have strong correlations with each other. 
And according to the World Health Organization, more than 700,000 people choose to end their life per year. Now, considering the fact that this is double the amount of homicides that occur per year, this is a number that we have to take seriously. So what can we do about it? How can we solve this problem? I'm going to leave you today with three courses of actions. First, get back in touch with yourself. Tone down the distractions. You know, confronting yourself may be the biggest fear that you have, but unless you do so, you will always be living a life of role playing. Second, practice mindfulness, even for 10 minutes a day. The next time you eat dinner, do it and do it without any distractions. The next time you take a hot shower, really feel the warm water on your skin and enjoy that moment. Don't worry about the future or dwell on the past. Bring it all back in and focus on that very moment. And third, get a piece of paper and pen and write down all the things that you would do if you had unlimited resources. And I want you to schedule a few days per year or per month and do those things. These three courses of actions will help you to bring yourself one step closer to the meaning of life, one that's personal and one that represents your core personality. And what's the return on investment? Suicide preventions and a meaningful life. Thank you very much.